So today, we're wrapping up what's my role, what's your role. And today I want to I wanna change up the way that we do the service. Uh, typically when we get to this point of the service, uh, I deliver a message to you that God has laid on my heart, uh, things that, that he has shown me in his word. Um, but this series is about action. It's about involvement. It's about being one body in Christ. Um, so I'm going to have you guys do a couple of things <clears throat> when the paper gets here. Uh, when we started this series, I asked you to write out on a piece of paper what you thought the role or what you thought that my role is in Jesus Community Church. And by extension, that would also follow to other pastors of other churches. So you can answer that generally in what is every pastor's role, and specifically in this fellowship, what is my role. When they bring the papers back, I want you to just take a couple minutes, and I just want you to kind of drop your ideas, what, what you think, down on the paper. Um, <clears throat> and then I'm going to share with you what I see my role as. Okay? And this, this is going to be fairly short, fairly concise. Uh, but then I want to engage with you. I want to know what you think your role is. Okay? Um, because... If you don't know what your role is, you're really going to struggle to find out how you can minister to and bless the body of Christ, specifically this fellowship. Um, now, keep in mind, we've looked at four different passages on the gifts, those things that the Spirit gives us to enable us to minister. Um, now, I, I have told you before, I don't think these lists are exhaustive. I don't think they were intended to be exhaustive. I think they were intended to be exemplary. They're, they're examples of what this type is, not a, full, a fully exhaustive list, because I believe that there are gifts that are given to the body that aren't listed in here uh, for a number of reasons. One, because um, we're not like them. Mm -hmm. Okay. We come from a radically different culture and time, and we are not like them. As a matter of fact, we're not like the church over there, or the church over there, or the church over there. We are unique in our position. We're, we're not, there's not a uniformity, there is a unity, whereas we all move in the same direction, but we're not all cookie-cutter stamped Christians. God built us with purposes in mind, with things that he wanted us to move into. And it is only when we are willing to accept what he desires of us that we can be used freely in the church. Okay? Now, I can look around, and having known you guys, some of you for quite some time, I can kind of point out and say, this is what I think. But thankfully, I'm not God. You guys should be happy about that. Okay? And I'm happy that you're not God. Um, so, how long does it take to cut paper? It took two of them, once holding it in place. Oh, oh Lord, I hope not. <laughs> hey Dennis, can you go manage the paper cutter? <laughs> well, I know that it always takes twice as long as you think it's going to be. Twice as long. Yes, that's, that's been my life experience. So I should reduce what I think by half, and then it'll be what I originally thought. <laughs> if you can. <laughs> no. No. Uh, All right. Um, so we talked a little bit last week about order in the church. We talked about 
uh, after the gifts were given, we, we talked about what is more important, um, that thing that is of greater value, and that led us from chapter 12, where he talks about the gifts in the Spirit uh, in the church, and then that led us right into uh, Paul's segue on to love and what love is. And if you remember, um, he went through, and after he had listed the, the gifts in chapter 12, he started off chapter 13 by relisting those gifts and saying that if they are used without love, they're of no value. Okay? Um, some translations say it's a clanging gong. I love to clang gongs. <laughs> um, I'm not so much fond of it when other people do it. <laughs> like my grandkids on the pot that, that fell off. It's not. I don't like it. They've got a very different rhythm than I have. So, in the midst of this, we see that Paul lists out love and, and that everything that we do has got to be motivated from a center, a foundation of love. And then he listed off those attributes of what love is and what love is not. Okay? And that's, that's somewhere that we as believers, as followers of Christ, we've got to dwell there. Okay? We should be constantly checking our love in light of this passage. And I, I want to give you, I want to encourage you that this love, okay, hand out two to each person. Oh, wait a minute. There, there might be more of you than I, I kind of guesstimated. Do you want help? Yeah, I guess. We might, we might run out. So, Dennis, you might need to manage again. Okay. Well, there is a front and back. You know. There is a front and back, yes, but... Uh, you can't use the front and back on both of, or one sheet. You can do front and back on both sheets, but not on one sheet. So as you get your piece of paper, the first thing I want you to do, I want you to write down what you think specifically my role is here at Jesus Community Church and generally, by extension, what any pastor's duty in the church is, okay? And, and for the sake of brevity, um, don't be concerned about the churches that have like 17 different pastors. Uh, just, just go off of the lead pastor in the church. What is his responsibility? What is his role? <clears throat> The one in your left hand. The one in your right hand we'll use later. I am. Oh, you have two, but we need to get these. Okay. Can so we use the Bible as a cheat sheet? No. There's two more. As a, as a cheat sheet. You guys don't want one? Um, I don't like that term in relation to the Bible. <laughs> but, uh, Here. Sure, if you want to. I worded it wrong, I'm sorry. That's all right. Okay, I'm out. Do we need to get more? Okay, good. Yeah. Did everybody get one? No. All right, you. How many still lack two of them? One, two, three. <laughs> All right, let me go get a couple. You more. can, but one of them you're keeping and one of them I'm keeping. So, can we use so. the back of these? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just have one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we always have them left over. Who needs them? Yep. <laughs> Yeah, 
here. Who else? So on this sheet, the white sheet of paper, if you're going to be using a bulletin, I want you to use the white sheet of paper for what is the role of a pastor in the church. Okay. What are his responsibilities? Don't put your name on it. You know it makes me nervous when you write a lot. <laughs> Summarize. those of you that didn't see it is wonder wonderful to have Ella back with us mm -hmm. yes. a little bit gimpy yes. but healing up yes. all right I'm gonna ask just generally if you would be willing to share what you think a pastor's role is and, and we're gonna just do uh, you know put your hand up I'll call on you just give me one thing uh, so we're, we don't end up repeating so think uh, say I ask Monica and she answers perfection <laughs> we're already hoes <laughs> nobody else can say perfection so um, if you would be willing to share what do you think the role of a pastor is and what is my role joy I saw your hand first Teaching. Teaching. Okay, I saw yours, Chris. Lead shepherd. Lead shepherd? To guide the flock. Okay. Okay, I saw James. Servant. 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 Brian, I saw your hand. Urge the spiritual growth of the congregation. Urge, you said? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So another hand, Leslie. To seek God's word and truth. To what? To seek God's to seek? word and truth. Uh, is there anyone in the body of Christ that shouldn't be doing that? <laughs> okay. Put it on the list. There's no wrong answers at this point. Oh, yes, there is. <laughs> so what we think, though, I mean, it's subjective. Okay. Yeah. Teach God's word and not your own. Teach God's word and not groan? And not your own. Oh, my own. Well, you're not supposed to groan either, but okay. <laughs>
bench. We'll protect the flock from false or bad teaching. Uh, counseling, but that might be um, <coughs> divided between elders depending on giftedness, and you know that's a lot for one guy to do. I saw a hand over here. Yeah, Chris. Baptizing elders. Baptizing the flock. Yeah, I saw another hand over here. Yeah, Brian. Help mediate disputes between the flock. Say the second part again, Alicia. Seek the wrong minded. Seek the wrong minded. spiritual check and balance. 
All right. Yeah, Katie. Yeah, see to the needs of the elderly. See to the needs of the elderly. Preaching on relevant issues. And of course, everything is relevant in God's Word, but I'm talking as examples preaching about hell, preaching about end times, things that are pertinent, People are are pertinent to this time period of our culture. I've not heard a message on hell for many, many years. Sometimes I think it's very relevant. Okay. Yes, sir. Know how to delegate. Know how to delegate. <laughs> I'm just going to put delegate because it's not enough to know. It's, it's got to take place. All right. Anyone else? <coughs> All right, so I'm going to read the list here. <laughs> and I, I summarize some of these uh, because you guys typically use a lot more words than I do. Uh, teaching, guide, servant, urge spiritual growth, seeks God's word uh, and the truth, seek God's word and not mine, protect the flock from false teaching, pray for the flock to go after the stray sheep, to answer questions from the flock, counseling, baptizing, mediating disputes uh, among the flock, helping the wounded, leadership, seek God's will and move flock to it, uh, guide the blind, seek wrong-minded, conduct weddings, funerals, and other things, uh, feed the sheep, to be a friend, to love, to be a spiritual check and balance, to look after the elderly, preach about relevant topics, and to delegate. Amen. I'm going to let you guys know right now you've got the wrong man. <laughs> got the right job, though. That's exactly right. All right. Now, all of these things are necessary in the body of Christ. Hopefully, over the last few months, we've been looking at um, roles and gifts you guys have seen that God has anointed different people for different areas of ministry within and without the body of Christ. Um, you know, Peter writes that uh, there are two types of gifts that the Spirit gives, uh, those that are to speak and those that are to do. And he, he just summarize it, summarizes it right there without going into further depth as to what these things are. Paul, uh, he actually teaches on it three different times. Uh, we saw in Romans uh, the ministry gifts that he says help the body to function properly. And, and that one, uh, all of the gifts lifted, listed there tend to be uh, gifts that are used or incorporated into the body of Christ for the growth. Um, and then in Ephesians, I'm sorry, in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, uh, we see a, another list, but this list is a little bit different than the previous list because Paul actually uses the phrase, uh, the Spirit will manifest these gifts. Uh, it, it's my personal belief that a person can... Uh, be blessed with a gift of the Spirit in Romans chapter 12 that will be ongoing. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I believe that people have a, an easier time moving in certain gifts than others, but these are typically not <coughs> gifts that are in use all the time. Uh, I believe that these are gifts that are uh, given us by the Spirit to empower us for a specific task at a specific time. Okay? I think that's why Paul says they're the manifestation gifts. They manifest for a time to accomplish the purpose of God. Um, I, I have a, a bit of an issue um, 
with people uh, taking one of those gifts and, and saying that, you know, this is their gift. Actually, any of these, when somebody says, this is my gift, uh, it's not your gift, you're the recipient of it, it's the Holy Spirit's gift. Um, so it should never be about me, it should never be about you, it should always be about what God uh, and the Holy Spirit are wanting to do in and through and to us. Okay? Um, so in Ephesians chapter 4, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we see these manifestation gifts that, that go. Um, now, interestingly enough, uh, prophecy is listed in both of those passages, in Romans 12 and in 1 Corinthians 12. And then in Ephesians chapter 4, prophecy is also listed, but it's, it's more of an office. It's the, the prophet, not the prophecy. So, in Ephesians chapter 4, uh, if you would go ahead and turn there real quick, because this is where I'm really going to focus on, on summarizing here. So Paul in Ephesians 4, starting in verse 1, he's talking about um, unity in the body of Christ. Now, um, I think it was Chuck Missler that, that uh, we were listening to on Thursday that said, uniformity is not what this is about. Unity is what it's about because God is not intending to uh, use a cookie cutter and get all of us the same shape and the same purpose. Um, we will have unity in that we will agree that we will work together, but we won't have uniformity because your gifts uh, that God has anointed you for serve a different purpose than the gifts that he has given to me. Okay? Um, so he's talking about unity in the body of Christ, and he, he drops down um, to verse 11, and he's been speaking about Jesus and his ministry and his resurrection. And in verse 11, he says, and, uh, when you see and, you, you should really back up and see why the and is there, because it's connecting two thoughts. Um, so, and, he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers. Okay? Notice there that that is not the end of that thought. He continues that thought. It's a comma, not a period. Okay? Uh, and then he explains why these gifts are given in the, in the church. Verse 12, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith, faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves, and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, uh, Jesus Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Okay? Um, Probably, if we were to go through our list and we were to hold them up in light of this passage, we would see almost everything that you guys listed in this passage. Okay? Um, but you will note that God gave more than just a pastor to fulfill these jobs. Okay? Um, one of the things that our church has been lacking for a long time, uh, has been a matter of prayer with me for a long time, is we have been missing other elders. Uh, now, remember, uh, way back when we started, I, I described the difference between an elder and a deacon. The qualifications are almost exactly the same, uh, so it's not that one is better and one is worse, or one is greater and one is lesser. Um, they are called to 
different positions. Okay? They're called to, to meet completely different criteria. Okay? The elder, uh, if you remember as we, we went through, um, we looked at the, the tasks that the elders are given and they're focused, uh, if, if you look in Acts, you don't have to turn there right now, but Acts chapter 2, 3, um, with the establishment of the church at Pentecost, uh, the infilling of the Spirit at Pentecost, um, we, we noticed that very early after this that there came an issue because there was a concern among the Gentile um, women that they were not getting their share of the, the portions of food but only the Jewish women were. And there was a concern because um, are we not following the same God? Well, they brought the issue to the apostles and uh, the apostles basically told them this is not what we're supposed to be focusing on. This is not where our attention is to be. Instead, choose for yourself seven worthy men to look after this need. And you look at the men that they chose and the qualifications that they had, um, the word actually in the Greek they're used to serve actually means a, a table waiter, okay? Somebody to wait on you. And I think that's specific because they're talking about food. They're talking about getting their portion of the food. Uh, generally, the word is servant, but specifically in this case, it's a, a, a table waiter, all right? Now, The elders, the apostles, said, we need to devote ourselves to prayer. Teaching. teaching and prayer. That's where their focus was. That's what they were supposed to be doing. Okay? Um, these others are, are looking after the physical needs. They are to look after the spiritual needs. Okay? That is where they predominantly are to focus their energy. Now that's not to say that God is not going to use them in other capacities throughout their ministry. Uh, you look at Paul and Peter and, and you see that they manifested numerous gifts at different times to accomplish the purpose of that moment. So um, to, to separate these two and say that the, there will never be any crossover uh, is not accurate. It's just a matter of where the focus and the call is on their life and how God would use them in that moment. Uh, ongoing ministry needs to happen at all times. Uh, the church does need to look after uh, its, its congregants, its, its fellowship. Um, we need to look after the spiritual well-being and also the physical well-being of those that are a member of the flock. So, we need men who are qualified and called to step up to lead, okay? Specifically in our church, um, you know, we four men have been doing uh, leadership duties um, since Kelly left, okay? When, when Kelly was here, there were five men. And when Kelly left, math tells us that five minus one is four, okay? Um, I've told you before when I was first approached about coming on the leadership team I said no uh, I, I was being very selfish because quite honestly I didn't want to know about you guys outside of church I didn't want to know where you guys were stumbling I didn't want to know where you guys had failed I didn't want to know um, you know the, the ick that is in all of our lives Okay. That, was, that was purely selfish of me. I just didn't want to deal with it. Well, God sees things a little different. Um, because God took me to a place where I was investing in that anyway. And um, I don't think you can truly love a person without being aware of their faults. Okay. Um, some of you guys are messed up just like me, you know, just like me. And maybe different ways, but, you know, we all stumble in many ways. 
So, what is my role? This is what I see that God is calling me to at Jesus Community Church. This passage right here, 11, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 uh, through 16. My role is to prepare you guys so that you can do your role. Okay? Um, now, I tend to be stubborn. I know it shocks you. Um, I'm stubborn and I don't like change. <clears throat> I'm very territorial. I hate it when somebody takes my parking spot. I don't like it at all when you guys move seats. <laughs> I'm not looking at Denise. Okay. I like my seat in the back of the church. I, I'm, I'm very territorial. I like things to be the way that I like them. Um, but God. But God. Uh, God is always pushing me out of my comfort zone. Uh, which is necessary because if he didn't, I would just stay safe and secure in my comfort zone and, and would not accomplish anything. Um, so, what, what is my role here? I believe that the, the core purpose of my role at Jesus Community Church is to pray and to preach the gospel. Now, that doesn't mean that any of these other things I can't do. As a matter of fact, a number of these things, uh, just in the, the way that God has used me in ministry, these things are being taken care of. However, uh, we have a list of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, multiplied by 40 plus people in this service. I can't do it all. I can't. A um, couple weeks ago, uh, Mike and I were texting back and forth and uh, told him that I missed seeing him at church and said, what are you talking about? I was sitting right next to you. <laughs> like the same row. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Now, I don't know. He could be lying. <laughs> he could be. But I, I tend That's to Thaddeus. intentionally... What's that? That's Thaddeus. That's Thaddeus. Um, after church. Um, but I try not to look at you guys too much. Okay? When I'm looking back and forth, I'm staring at dead space, and that's not what's in between your ears. I'm, I'm staring at the spaces between you, because I hate it when a pastor says something that is harsh or corrective or ex exhortative, and he's looking at me. Okay? I don't want you guys to feel that. I want you guys to be convicted by the Holy Spirit, not by my eyeballs. Okay? So... Um, I didn't even know Mike was there. Okay, um, that's that's kind of how oblivious that I can be. I try to keep myself focused during the song service because that's that's the part where I feel like I, I get energized and, and and prepped for the word. Uh, I don't want to see you guys raising or not raising your hands. If any of you danced this morning, I didn't see it. Um, maybe we can do a replay later. Um, <laughs> But one of the things that I talk about in the 101 class, hopefully a good number of you have been there and you'll, you'll understand this. One of my objectives here at Jesus Community Church, one of my expectations is that we will not be a church that is infiltrated or infested with cancer. Okay, and I'm not talking about <laughs> physical cancer. Um, that happens. It's horrible. Uh, it, it's not a good thing. But what, what does cancer do? 
It spreads. It eats up all of the resources of the body, the, those resources that should be going to other things to maintain good health. It consumes until the body can no longer sustain itself. Okay? Now, how does that work here at Jesus Community Church? Are you consuming all the resources and weakening the body of Christ here at Jesus Community Church? Or are you investing your time, your talent, your energy into Jesus Community Church such that somebody who needs refreshing, somebody that needs to step back for a minute and, and go through some rehab, see, receive some ministry, are you helping so that when that time comes for you, that person will be there for you? As, as Paul says, you know, we comfort with the comfort that we ourselves have been comforted. I can't, in good conscience, let you guys be pew warmers. I can't. That would be to fail in, in one of the things that God has given me to do. And by your own lists, your own expectations, you think that too. All right? Now you guys are looking at each other going, oh, why did you have to say that? Okay? In order for the body to function properly, the first thing that it needs is the head. And that is Jesus Christ. He is the head of the body of Christ. But then it needs all of the other parts to work in cooperation for the healthy growing and, and living with vitality to be effective in the work that the body of Christ has been called to do. So, what does this mean? It means that a lot of us have been sleeping on the job uh, because for years, uh, starting back in about 1997 and going up until about 2006, 2007, um, I, was, I was about as useful as a wart on the nose. Okay? That, that's about the practicality I had in church. I was jaded, I was tired, I was beat up. Uh, I did not want to, uh, to be honest there, for a couple of years, I didn't want to be affiliated with the body of Christ. The body of Christ hurt me more than the world ever did. Okay? Now, sometimes that's appropriate because God disciplines those that he loves. But the vast majority of the time in the church, it's our fault. It's our fault. Because we have certain standards that we expect people to live up to and when they don't live up to them, um, sometimes we, we just can't be the mature one. Uh, we got to tell them what they're doing wrong. Okay? And a lot of times that has absolutely nothing to do with biblical premise. It has to do with personal preference. Okay? Um, my personal preference would be that I had hair to comb in the morning. <laughs> but that's not going to be this side of heaven. Um, I've never thought about having hair in heaven. <laughs> um, but I cannot put that preference on you because that is my preference. Now, there are times in the body of Christ where we need encouragement and or exhortation. Um, I, I will tell you this first. If someone comes to you and says they have a message from God to you, what they say should only repeat what God has already spoken to you. And you've tuned out. Okay? Um, because God has intimacy with all of his children. And when God prompts you to do something that he wants you to do, um, oftentimes, when, while we're busy saying no, he's speaking to somebody else to come and reinforce what he has just said. If somebody speaks something as the word of God to you, and God has not been dealing with you about it, put it on the back burner, set it on low, let it stew there for a little while while you seek God to see whether or not that is actually a message from God. Hold it up in the light of God's word. <coughs> hold it up in the light of, of uh, Christian counsel and, and uh, see 
whether or not that is the Word of God. Now I say that not because the person that gives it to you may be malicious or trying to be all that. I say that because we're all human and we all make mistakes and we all miss it sometimes. Okay? Um, I pray that you guys have grace for me when I mess up, when I fail. Uh, I pray that I have grace for you when you mess up and you fail. Because if we're not going to operate in grace, um, we're really not inheritors of the grace that he has extended to us. Okay? If, if uh, we can't forgive, how do we expect that God will forgive us? As a matter of fact, Jesus actually uh, makes that statement at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 7, uh, 5, 6, and 7, and says that... Uh, by the measure we forgive, we will be forgiven. Now, I don't think that is a salvation issue. I think it's a bondage and burden issue. Uh, I think when we walk in unforgiveness, we, we bind ourselves up with chains and, and carry them around um, to no effect other than to hurt ourselves. Um, so, be gracious to me. And I will be gracious to you. Not, now, let me, let me qualify that. <laughs> not that you have to be gracious first. We both need to have grace for one another because it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about the body of Christ and what uh, we look like and how we function both inside the church and out in the world. So, second piece of paper. Wrapping up my role, your role. If you are not sure what your role is in the church, Talk to one of the leaders in the church. Uh, you can talk to me. You can talk to Steve or Angie or Dennis or Jeannie or Matthew. Um, come talk to us. Let us have some insight as to what God is dealing with you about. Uh, even if we don't have the answer right away, at least we can join you in praying for that answer. Okay? So, second sheet of paper. Totally different topic. I want an honest answer from you. Do not write your name on this paper. I want an honest answer for you. As to why you don't come to prayer meetings. Any of the prayer meetings. We're in the middle, almost exactly in the middle of our 28 days of prayer. Thank you, yes, sir. And uh, we meet here at 545 in the morning. Uh, if I can get up and come at 545 in the morning, you can. Um, sometimes I just stay awake and come. Um, so that's one prayer meeting. Every Sunday after church, we have prayer in the 10 to 12 year old room in the other building to pray for unsaved loved ones. Um, every Wednesday here at the church at seven o'clock, we meet to pray over the needs of the church and, and there are a lot of needs in the church. Um, I want an honest answer for you, from you. Don't, don't put your name on it. I want this to be completely anonymous. I want you to put down why you don't come to any of the prayer meetings. Okay? Um, I, I, I need insight. I need insight. Okay? So I'm going to count you because I expect every one of you is going to give me a sheet of paper. And don't put somebody else's name on it either. <laughs> okay? Um, that's, that's verboten. All right, so take a moment, write it down. Um, I know that at different points of the prayer meetings, people have things that are going on that can't come. Uh, you know, some people can't make the Wednesday night because of work or other commitments. Um, but I don't, I find it hard to believe that each of us has so much going on that we can't come to one of the meetings, at least periodically, okay? And this is not to chastise you in any way, okay? Uh, this is not intended to be a rebuke or an exhortation. All I want is to know the reasons because I'm praying. My prayer for years has been that God would make this a praying church. 
okay? Because prayer is what motivates, what prompts these things that God wants to do. And, and um, I hate 1% milk. I despise skim milk. It's not milk. It's water that somebody dyed white. Maybe bluish white. Okay? I want the real thing. I don't want that 1% thing or that skin thing.